before the video starts, I just want to inform you to put a Discord server where we can talk about various different things and help each other out. It would be amazing if you checked it out. Link is of course in the description down below. Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to create a control settings menu in Unity. Well, what is a control settings menu you might say? Well, it's an options menu where you can change the controls from inside of the game. So, in other words, the player can choose the controls of the game. So, how are we going to do this? Well, we are going to have an empty object uh, called the controls manager. And as the name suggests, it's going to manage all of our controls. Meaning, it's going to save and change the controls from inside of the game. That allows us to access this uh, all the controls from around the game. Uh, so, we don't need to specify the controls in each, each script. So, let's get right into it. As you can see, I have a simple 2D scene, but that applies on 3D as well. Um, it's just a bit easier to uh, work with 2D. Um, so I've got the player, nothing on it. It's just a sprite renderer, uh, square sprites, nothing really uh, to it. Um, so let's create a movement script. As you can see, I've typed it already and create an ad. And let's open that in Visual Studio. So we'll write a basic movement script and then we're going to change that script so that it will work with our control settings. So let's go ahead, let's uh, delete all of these because we don't need them. We want to have a rigid body, uh, RB, and then a public float speed. And then we're going to go on the void start. Over here, we're going to set RB equal to get component uh, of type rigid body 2D. Oh, sorry, that's the rigid body 2D, change that. Let's get into the uh, update method. First things first, we're going to change it to fix update because we're going to work with physics. Create a float x move equal to input dot get axis raw because we don't want any smoothing applied. Let's get the horizontal axis and do the same for the vertical. So float y move and you guess it's vertical. Uh, at the end, we're going to set rb dot velocity equal to move vector two with coordinates x move and y move and multiply that by speed and time to fix delta time. And we also want to normalize. So as you can see on the movement screen, we've got the speed variable. We can change that. I'll change it to 400. Let's add a rigid body 2D. Let's turn down the gravity scale and let's save. Again, your movement, you can just create any movement you want. It shouldn't be like it. You can even do a 3D movement. I just want to show you how to change the controls. Let's create the control settings menu. Uh, we're going to create an empty object that for that controls manager. And let's add a component of controls manager. And let's let's create an S. And inside of here, we somehow we need a way to store the controls. Now Unity provides us with a very easy way to store controls, and it's called key code. Um, so a key code is storing data as of key, key presses. By key presses, we mean any keyboard press, mouse, button press, or even joystick. Let's say how are we going to um, store that data? Uh, well, we're going to use dictionaries. You can think of them like arrays, but in arrays, uh, we access the data with, with indexes. So for example, in an array, I want, uh, when I want to get an item from that array, I'm going to say, I want the first item, I want the zeroth item, I want the tenth item, and so on. But in a dictionary, we assign keys, we assign key values to it. And then we get the items by referring them as a key value. For example, we assign a value uh, w to a forward, to a string called forward. And I, instead of accessing it with the index, we access by saying, hey, I want the key codes with a key forward. So let's create that. Uh, let's create a dictionary. It's as easy as that. We want the key value. It's a string. And the string is going to kind of have the name of the key code, the name of the control. For example, forward, backwards, right, left, fire, or whatever. And then the value, uh, what the actual value is, is a key code. And then let's name it controls. Let's set that equal to a new dictionary of string and key codes. We're going to set that also to public so we can access it from other classes or objects in the scene. And also make sure you've got system.collections.generic namespace. And then we are going to, well, assign some values, some default control. Um, to do that, we're going to go to uh, void awake. So to create a control, we're going to control's 
dots adds and inside of it we want to keep we want to assign a key for example forward and want to assign it to a default value like p equal to w so now we can refer the w as forward like we've given it a name or something let's create uh, some more controls for it All right, so let's save and go back into the movement script. I want to change that script so it works together with the controls manager. First things first, we want to access the controls manager. To do that, we're going to create an instance of it. Controls manager controls. Uh, let's call it manager. On the start method, we're going to set manager equals to find object of type control. There we go. Uh, and that will access manager from our scene. So uh, right here we don't want to uh, get access from the input manager of Unity. We want to create our kind of own input manager. So we're going to delete our scene and we're going to uh, have them to be equal to zero as default uh, and then we're going to change them according to our key presses. Now we want X move to be equal to one if we press the D key or with the very right we will Press the right key and left, we press the left key. So let's create that. Let's go to f input dot get key down or get key rather, and then we're going to access the key, the right key, manager dot controls. And then to access a, a value from a dictionary, you just put the square brackets right there, like an array, and you put the key that you have in this case. Right. Uh, so if we press the button or the key that is associated. Um, with right or the right movement, then we want to set x move uh, equal to one and s f input dot get key and the same thing um, manager dot controls. I want the left in this case. Then we want x move to be equal to minus one. Otherwise, if we don't press anything either right or left, it's going to be zero. Okay. So, and then we want the same exact thing. Or a forward and backward. So let's do that. I also forgot to point out that these uh, key values should be exactly the same as these ones. Also, I want to uh, again go if input dot get uh, key down in this case uh, manager dot controls. I'm not sure yet. This also uh, works with uh, most button presses. Let's close the fire. Then I want to fire. And the method kit, so let's go to void, fire, let's go down here, and then I want to want to print fire. Now, what does print do? Not a lot of people know that, but print is exactly the same as the backward lock. So yeah. As you can see, we've got the controls menu and it's it's play, and we should be able to see that we are able to move correctly. And if I hit the leftmost bottom, it says fire in the console. Let's go and create the UI now. So we're going to create a UI and let's create a canvas first, of course, and then under that we're going to UI um, panel. And that panel is going to be the pause menu panel. Now let's change the sprite and a bit the color a bit as well, a bit of a darker gray. Um, and then under it we are going to create all the bottoms. Now this is very important because we're going to name the bottoms such as that control settings menu is able to uh, identify each bottom by its name and then it's going to be able to change the text that is displayed on the bottom. As you can see right here that I want to be able to change the text from that bottom. So to do that we want to be able to name the buttons correctly so that the controls manager is able to identify them. All right, so let's go back here and and under it, we're going to create a UI bottom. I highly recommend using text Xmas Pro, but you need to import it, so I'm not going to bother doing that right now. And in that, we're going to name it the exact same name as you name these. Let's go right here and let's uh, call that forward button. And let's under it, let's go to the text and say the e text that is going to be the text displayed on it. So what is the e? Of it. In this case, you can say W, for example, for forward. Under it, we're going to use another text. And in that text, this text is going to be the description of it, for example, forward. And let's move that into the side, kind of like this. As you can see, that's how it looks like. Let's change that text to description text. So yeah, now we need to create all the bottoms. Also, name them correctly. 
Uh, that's very important. It looks kind of like that. Disable the pause menu because we want to enable it when we press the escape key. So let's go into the canvas and let's create a pause menu inside of here. We're going to add a boolean as pause and set that equal to pause. Then we're going to create a, a public game object um, pause menu panel. And then over here, when we press the escape key, so if input stuff get key down, a uh, key code escape. We want to change the value of this pause. So this pause is not equal to this pause. So that will revert the uh, value of this pause. So if, if it's paused, then we want to pause menu panel that's active default. So we want to set that not to be active. And time dot time scale is equal to at one. Else we want to pause the menu. So pause menu panel dot set active. So we want to enable the pause menu uh, panel and then time dot time scale. There are plenty of tutorials out there how to do a pause menu. Let's see if zero so the game stops. My bad, uh, we're going to see set that not equal to this pause. If it isn't paused, we want the game to run normally. If it is though, we want the game to be paused. Inside of the uh, pause menu under here, we have a pause menu panel. Uh, and let's drop the panel right here and let's hit. We should see if we press escape, uh, a menu appears well, with these buttons. All right, so let's create the logic. Let's go back into the control manager script. Let's add a public void change controls. Add this parameter a string control, which will be the name of the control. Instead of here, we're going to put the logic of changing the controls. So the way that we're going to do it is we're going to loop through each possible key code. And if the player has pressed that key code, then we want to uh, assign that value, that key code, to the according uh, control. So let's do that. So let's go up here and create a public Boolean listening. And let's set that equal to false. Let's also mark it as hides an inspector because we don't want to see it in the inspector. And down here, we're going to set listening is equal to true. So we, we are listening for a key. And then we're going to set a for each key code. E. And follow me along because it's a bit weird. We're going to access the uh, list of all the possible key codes. So it's in the system. Dot enum. Dot get values as we're going to take the type of. So by doing that, we are accessing all the possible values of key codes. And then we want to check if we press that key. So if input dot get key down key. Then we want to change that control. So controls control is equal to key. So that's pretty much it. And then we're going to set listening is equal to false. So we're not listening. But we want to loop that so uh, it's not run for one frame. So let's go down here. Let's add the void update. And if it's listening, then we want to change controls with, with a name. Now we want a uh, hide an inspector another public string control name. And let's set that equal to an empty string for now. And down here, we're going to set the control name equals to control. And let's call that function with the parameter of control uh, name. Let's save that. Now we hit play. Um, you will see that it's not doing anything. I just pressed uh, the up arrow. Change, but didn't change because we haven't assigned the buttons to do anything. Let's go into each button. Let's go, for example, forward button. Let's click on the click. Let's drag in the controls manager and the object slots and the function once the controls manager you want to change controls and you will see a string right here. If you don't see the me your method, make sure it is public. So let's go and put the key to it, which is forward. Make sure it's spelled correctly. Let's do that for all the buttons. So that should be it. And then hit escape. Uh, this menu pops up. And then if we press a button, for example, we want to change the forward button, let's assign it to G, for example. Nothing happens, as you can see. I'm pressing W right now. I hope you hear that. 
But if I press G, I'm moving up. Um, so yeah, you can pretty much change the controls like this. Um, now, what we like to do is to change the visuals and to show which control changed to. So let's go back into the script, into the controls manager script, and right here we want a bottom array. A public button array. Now, it automatically adds the unity.ui. If it doesn't, make sure you do. And let's set a name at buttons. Um, and then we want to just change the name for it. Um, so we're going to loop for each button, button in the buttons collection. We want to check if the button uh, dot name is equal to control plus the uh, button. If you named all of them correctly, you should be able to see that this is pretty much the forward plus the button. So if we name correctly, this is very handy. Let's go back and um, if that is the case, then then we want to access the text from inside the button. Also, make sure that the key text is on the top. Go into the controls menu, and you will see a bottom array. Let's drag all the bottoms right here. The, um, the way that we're going to do it doesn't really matter. And over here, what we can use is the bottom dot get components in children. I want to take the first object of it, and that we're going to uh, set the text equal to P. As as escape, uh, this menu pops up and if you press your button and it's another one, you can see it changes. Now let's change the controls to the arrows. I can't move with uh, the ASW keys, but I can move with uh, my arrows keys. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching everybody. If you liked the video, make sure you like it, and if you want to see more of it, consider subscribing as well. That will help a lot. Um, also, if you've got any questions or any video ideas, of people, make sure you leave a comment down below. And also, thanks so much for having subscribers. You guys are amazing. Thank you, everybody, and I shall see you on the next video. Bye.